Hello viewer, uh, welcome to history and government lesson that is in form 3, lesson 5 with your teacher Mr. John Gatum. So we shall continue on our chapter 1 that is the European invasion of Africa and the process of colonization. And uh, we have been looking at the process of uh, partitioning of Africa and this one we say it was culminated it was culminated in the Berlin conference that was uh, called or rather convened by the German chancellor that is the uh, Otto von Bismarck and therefore in this uh, conference that is the Berlin conference uh, all the European nations, the 15 uh, uh, powers, including the USA that had attended the conference, uh, they resolved or rather they came up with terms of Berlin Conference. And on this, uh, I gave you some assignment. On this, uh, on this one, I gave you some assignment that you will try so that in uh, today's lesson, we shall uh, pick from there. And the question was, you state and explain four terms of Berlin Conference. So there are uh, various terms of Berlin Conference, or rather the resolution of Berlin Conference. This is one, you're supposed to state and then you explain. This is one, uh, the principle or rather the terms of effective occupation. This is to mean that any European power that had claimed on African territory was required to show a proof of the effective uh, occupation. Uh, another term of Berlin Conference is what we called the spheres of influence. And these spheres of influence, it meant that all the European nations that had an interest on a particular colonies in Africa, they were supposed to inform others, they were supposed to notify. This one was a principle of notification. They're supposed to notify other European nations to avoid any a sort of conflict that could emerge with, uh, among the European nations. Another term of the Berlin Conference, uh, it uh, resolved that the powers or other European uh, powers that attended, they resolved that uh, the basins of the River Congo, uh, River Niger, and Zabezi as well as their tributaries would be open for free trade. That any European power, they had a freedom to trade in these uh, aforementioned uh, territories or other the basins. Another uh, terms of this Berlin Conference was abolition of slave trade. It is, this one followed uh, an idea that in Europe, there was a campaign against the slavery, or rather the slave trade, and therefore the European nations that were to occupy African territories, they had to ensure that there is no any uh, sort of uh, uh, trade uh, human beings, but to introduce the legitimate trade, that is the trade on the goods. Finally, at uh, this uh, Berlin Conference, they resolved that uh, any power, any power that was uh, occupying a certain region, they, they were supposed to uh, save or rather protect the missionaries in this area as well as they protect uh, the freedom or rather the interest of the white man. So in today's lesson, we shall now concentrate on the topic and the subject that is the impact of partitioning of Africa the impact of partitioning of Africa. What was the result of the partitioning of Africa? Now that uh, the European nations they have met in Berlin Conference, they have come up with some resolutions. What were the impact, that, what were the aftermath of this? So the, uh, the partitioning of Africa in Berlin Conference, it led to a state or the colonies formation. It led to the state or rather the colonies formation. The colonies were formed following uh, this uh, conference because in Africa, Africa was supposed to be shared among these European power without any rivalries or rather without any war. So therefore, this one led to the uh, emergence of colonies that were formed. Two, the second impact it led to the creation of boundaries in Africa the boundaries were made in Africa. So as these powers declared as spheres of influence, as these powers 
a declared an effective occupation by notifying other Europeans. So there were a creation or other drawing of boundaries in Africa such that there was partitioning of Africa into various boundaries whereby the Europeans could establish their administrative system. Three, there was loss of power of African leaders. So the African leaders uh, who uh, initially occupied their region or rather their local areas as their leaders, uh, they were, th their powers were scrapped by the Europeans in an event when the Europeans uh, took over these colonies. So once they took a colonies, they established the administrative system and therefore uh, disregarding the African leaders who are there. These are the, the chiefs, uh, the, the, those who are, are leading in these areas. For another impact of the Berlin Conference or other impact of partitioning, it led to Europeans' administrative system. The Europeans' administrative systems, they were established in this area. So, talk of the Europeans' uh, power. They came up with their own administrative uh, power, or rather the strategies. They established their colonies, and therefore, they, uh, they came up with their own administrative system. Examples of this European administrative system, we have the direct rule. Some of them, they could uh, uh, rule themselves without even involving the African local African, uh, local African leaders. Uh, another one, we have indirect rule. Indirect rule, this is whereby they involve the local African leaders, and on top, they are the one. Uh, another one, we have the assimilation, a good example of the uh, European power who used assimilation, this is the, the French. Uh, we also have the uh, association. So this one among many other was uh, the form of administrative system that were established. Uh, fifth, the partitioning of Africa led to uh, European growth, uh, economic growth, the European economic growth. The Africa, the Europeans, they had interest in Africa because in Africa there were raw materials. So the raw materials were available in Africa. And therefore, uh, by over exploiting all these resources, remember in Europe there was what we call the Industrial Revolution. And therefore, Industrial Revolution required some raw materials. These raw materials were uh, acquired in Africa. Therefore, the European, Europeans grew as far as economic growth is concerned. Number six, it led to the spread of Christianity. Remember, upon a declaration of a spheres of influence in Africa, the Christianity was spread because the Europeans' power, they were supposed to protect the missionaries. The missionaries, they were interested on converting Africans as, as they counter uh, the spread of Islam. And therefore, when they uh, occupied the African region because of the partitioning, they were able to spread the religion, that is the Christianity religion. Seven, another impact is abolition of slave. It was a, a term, or rather it was a resolution uh, in the Berlin Conference that any European power, uh, if they want to occupy the African colonies, they were supposed to abolish or rather stop the slavery and uh, establish what we call the legitimate trade. So this one led to the abolition of slave because Africa, uh, uh, they, uh, no, in, uh, in Europe, there was anti a uh, slavery campaign that was actually spread by economies such as the uh, Adam Smith. Uh, we have other humanitarian uh, factors and humanitarian leaders who actually preferred uh, or rather said that the free slaves were more, more productive than the slavery. And therefore, this one led to the abolition of slave. Eight, uh, they, uh, because of the partitioning, partitioning of Africa led to the European settlement in Africa. Remember, the main reason for them, for the Europeans, uh, for the Europeans' power to uh, get an interest in Africa is because there was a surplus 
uh, population in Europe. And therefore, this surplus or excess population in Europe, it was uh, to be resettled in another areas of a sea. And therefore, in Africa, all these uh, Europeans' uh, uh, surplus population was resettled in Africa. This one led to establishment of European settlement in Africa. And a good example is British uh, who came in Kenya and they settled in the region. Nine, uh, another impact, it led to fall of some African kingdom. Uh, initially in Africa, there were some uh, established uh, strong kingdoms and these kingdoms, they could amass a lot of wealth and therefore upon the arrival of the Europeans, the Europeans came with their own administrative system and therefore uh, uh, ignoring the existing kingdom. So these kingdoms collapsed and a good example of the kingdom that, were colla that collapsed in Africa, we have one in Uganda, the Paganda Kingdom. It collapsed later on uh, when the British emerged. We have others in West Africa who actually collapsed when uh, the French occupied the region. Uh, uh, we have another uh, impact. Ten, we have led to infrastructure development. So infrastructures was developed and it was one of the resolutions uh, in the Berlin Conference such that upon the effective occupation of Africa, so the European powers, they were mandated to develop uh, their colonies and therefore these colonies was developed in terms of infrastructures. So the railways was set uh, uh, on. We have a good example of Kenya-Uganda Railway in 1901 that was set. So, and this one among many other uh, ensured that there is an infrastructural development in the region. Uh, another one, another impact, a great impact that uh, actually emerged is the two countries were not colonized. Uh, in Africa, all the other continents were colonized apart from two, and this is the Liberia and Ethiopia. This uh, uh, Liberia and Ethiopia, the two countries were not, uh, never uh, colonized. Even up to date, they were never colonized. That is in history. So they were independent uh, state, and the real, uh, uh, main reason is the Ethiopians, they kept their freedom through successful military resistance, and this is under the Emperor Menelik II, who actually modernized the, uh, 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 modernized the army and also made this army to be much strong along uh, roads, uh, bridges, and uh, schools. So when the Italians invaded, they were defeated so badly by the Menelik that thus no other Europeans uh, power were able to take the Ethiopia. So the main reason why Ethiopia was not colonized is because the Ethiopian kept their uh, freedom through successful military resistance. They gave a very strong successful military resistance that were led by the Emperor Menelik II, uh, who actually modernized the army along with roads, bridges, and schools. And therefore, the Italians who had an interest in the area, they were heavily defeated. And uh, therefore, the Menelik led uh, this region uh, to escape uh, the colonization or other partitioning. Uh, we have another country that was not colonized, and this is the Liberia. Liberia was not colonized simply because uh, Liberia was uh, initially founded by uh, the America, the USA, and the USA, the main reason for finding or rather establishing these colonies, it is because they wanted to establish an area for the freed uh, a slave. Remember in uh, in USA, there was a war against the slavery, and this was based on the Monroe Doctrine, uh, whereby they were the, 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 the Europeans they were not supposed to uh, engage in an evil known as the slave trade. And therefore, all the slaves they were supposed to be resettled in Liberia. And therefore, a Liberia being an USA colonies, uh, it was actually protected upon uh, or other against being taken by the Europeans. And therefore, this one made Liberia to escape from uh, 
the colonization. So the two countries were not colonized even after all the other co uh, colonies or other countries in Africa were colonized. So we summarize the impact of partitioning of Africa. We see, or we can divide this one into two, the period between 1880 and a period between 1913. So you realize that a period between 1890 are uh, all the uh, African colonies. All the African colonies, most of them, they had not been taken, or rather they had not been colonized. But now in 1913, you realize that all the uh, uh, colonies in Africa, apart from two, that is Liberia and Ethiopia, they were not colonized. So you can see the partitioning of Africa. This one came as a result of uh, the Europeans taking uh, Africa and they drew up artificial boundaries. You can see the artificial boundaries in colors uh, during the partitioning. So in many cases, these boundaries were made without the regard to the people's ethnic background and language. So you realize that some of the communities uh, that were from one area, uh, they were uh, splitted up. Uh, it led to the splitting up of the community. A good example, we have Maasai of present day Kenya and those of Tanzania, and also Somali of Kenya, and Somali of uh, Somalia, that is Somalia, Somali, Kenya, and Somalia. So this one, among many other, you realize that uh, the drawing of these artificial boundaries that you can see among the European nation, it was done without any consultation of the African leaders, African local leaders. So this one uh, was actually the impact of uh, partitioning of Africa. And it is my desire and my, my desire that you are able to uh, follow my lesson and you get to know what uh, actually came after the partitioning of Africa. So to this one has uh, uh, come to the end of our lesson today. And I want to give you some, just a simple assignment that you will try so that in the next lesson we shall be able to discuss, go through the assignment before we introduce the next lesson. So you attempt this question, describe the main impact of partitioning of Africa, you describe the main impact. We have just discussed the impact. You cannot afford to miss this. You are able to uh, capture uh, the main impact of partitioning of Africa. So thank you for following my lesson. And therefore, for this and much more, you can always get uh, us as a Lemu TV through the number on your screen. That is a number, you can SMS us through the number 4007. That is the number 4007. On our Facebook page, you can uh, reach us at Lemu TV. We have a page at Facebook. Uh, finally, uh, our Twitter handle, those who are using Twitter, you can always get us at Elimu uh, underscore K-E. Uh, so, uh, thank you. I'm so glad that you are, you are watching Elimu TV. Uh, this is your TV station where you watch and learn. Thank you. Uh, stay tuned till we meet in the next lesson.